Thank you, David. Christian, um, you know, history teaches us that we've never eradicated or come close uh, to near zero deaths from uh, any disease without an effective vaccine. So can you fill us in on what role a vaccine might play in the, in the, in the long-term perspective of, of uh, uh, achieving the global malaria action plan? Thank you, Chris. Maybe two. Is this one working? Yes. yes. That's fine. Then. That's going to be easier. Uh, I can use my hands. Um, <laughs> just going to some <coughs> things at the, at the beginning. Uh, the start that I, an introduction that I used last week in a couple of presentation that we did in, in Europe. A couple of years back, people were always telling us, the vaccine guys, that when we were coming to a meeting, it was always to present plans, and always plans, and hopes, and things of that kind. Today, in, especially in the field of malaria vaccine, where we are working at the Malaria Vaccine Initiative, we're, getting, we're coming with data. The situation is changing. But why is it changing? Because for the first time, we've got a vaccine that is now in phase three, means the late phase of development, the last important trial during which, in fact, mm -hmm. we're going to confirm efficacy of safety. It could eventually still fail, but basically, we are very much toward the end of the development. What does that mean? And it's very important because two years ago I had many, many comments when we embarked into that major endeavor, means immunizing more than 15,000 children across seven countries in Africa in 11 centers. And at the end of January 2011, we did 15,561. 460. 460, I'm always missing the five, four and five. That means, in fact, We've completed the enrollment of the two cohorts, five to 17 months and six to 12 weeks. It's very important that notion of six to 12 weeks means, in fact, the infants that are coming to the expanded program of immunization, on immunization. Why? Because we don't want to add additional burden to the countries. The vaccine is going to piggyback on the existing EPI in Africa. It's very important. And why? Because basically that's the primary target population. That's where. People are, people are dying, the kids that are dying in Africa. At the end of, so now, what does that mean? It means, in fact, that by October this year, we're going to have the first one-year follow-up of the first COVID. We will know, basically, on the large population, what are the exact, the exact level of efficacy of the vaccine. Then, a year later, we'll know in the six to 12 weeks. And in 2013, we'll have 30 months of follow-up of those kids. In 2014, we'll be able to submit the entire package to EMA and WHO, the, the joint agreement between those two organizations, to come to a possible recommendation by WHO in 2015. So that's the plan. At the end of last year, came a certain last data in a phase two trial that was conducted in three countries in Africa. And what was very interesting is that we had more than 50% efficacy, which for a vaccine against opioids parasite is very, very important and very high. But basically, we had that efficacy on all episodes of malaria. And in fact, the number of episodes over a period of 19 months came down by 15 to 50% across the 19 months of follow-up. And that's very important for the vaccine, because up to this time, we were talking in terms of risks. So basically, we're very hopeful to have a vaccine with a good level of efficacy. What is very important for us, those 11 sites are in countries where we see the impact of the current initiatives. And in places like Mozambique, like Kilifi in Kenya, people really don't see any cases of malaria anymore. Congratulations to all they have done up to this point in time. They are very, very effective. That will give us and will tell us how the vaccine can help in those conditions. But at this point in time, we also see places like, in fact, Ghana, in Kenya, where we still get a lot of clinical malaria and a lot of severe, uh, severe malaria cases. And that's, we know already that we will have <coughs> enough, a large enough number of malaria cases to conclude. So that means that we will conclude that malaria is still very much around. And we will know exactly how and where to use the vaccine. And that leads me to the next and important initiative that we have undertaken. One of the major problems of vaccines, if you look at hepatitis B and all the vaccines that have been introduced in Africa, it took up to 15 years for the vaccine to be widely proposed and for those vaccines to reach the ones that need them the most. We have initiated a, 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 a 
project called Decision Making Framework that in fact work with countries. We just facilitate the project. The ownership is to the country. And basically it is to put together and collect the data that are required to take the decision to use or not to use the vaccine. And once that decision is made, to look into all what is required to make it a success, a maximum uptake on the vaccine is going to be available. At the same time, we do interact with Gavi, the Global Fund. We've been as well to the President Malaya Vaccine Initiative. See that? I'm one of the President Malaya Initiative. And, <laughs> 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 and, and to inform you know, where we were and what we were achieving, because it's very important to let people know when eventually the vaccine is going to be available. Important to know that the vaccine is developed by a partnership that works very well between MBI and the Pat Panay Vaccine Initiative and GSK. It means, in fact, for us very important that for more than $200 million that we have invested, they have invested more than $300 million in the plant. And it's important that public private partnership in going towards winning the battle, moving towards winning the battle against malaria. So, beyond RTSS. We're working at the moment on other initiatives, other proposals that would eventually bring the efficacy to 80%. God's science has done a lot of progress in terms of malaria, but that, considering the time that is taken to develop a vaccine, will most probably leave a vaccine that would be available by 2025, not before. 80% would be fantastic. We've got a couple of initiatives that we are couple of approaches that we are starting on that front. And since, in fact, we've been, and we've targeted now elimination and eradication, we've changed a little bit our focus. The first vaccines on which we, on which we were working were and are targeting the disease, protect from the disease. Now we are going to target a completely different moment <coughs> where the bed nets are also active, cutting the transmission. And, or, and it always makes people smile, so you have to smile when I'm going to say that. Uh, people smile when I'm mentioning that. We are now interested in protecting the mosquitoes. That means, in fact, basically what we are studying is how can we cut that moment when the mosquito, you know, we're going to use human beings to give passive immunity to the mosquito and stop the cycle, either in human beings or in the mosquitoes. And there are a couple of very interesting avenues there. So basically, that would be a very interesting complement for the intervention that are going on now. We've got partnership to work on those various developments in uh, India, where we have been successful in, in uh, expressing those proteins for which we are going to use adjuvants, you know, those components that are going to increase the efficacy of those vaccines. And we're going to study something that, of, uh, that we don't know very well who's infecting and which part of the population in Africa infect mosquitoes. That's something on which we have very little data and we're going to start those type of things that most probably will help also the community to understand <coughs> and target a little bit more those populations on which we will have to focus at the end of our development. So a lot of good, interesting things happening in the field of, uh, of vaccines in which we are hopefully and where we are going to do more positive data coming in the next month or years.